Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Check this out. This is a carbon fiber plague doctor mask that has an actual functioning respirator attachment. Huh. I have worked on this for like the last two weeks, and I am excited to finally show it off. So, if you're unfamiliar with this channel, I build a lot of different things that are armor and masks and things like that. And this was by far the most labor-intensive thing I've ever built. It took a long time to get done and done right. And there's still little things I could do to improve it. But, uh, if you're unfamiliar also with what a Plague Doctor mask is, around the 17th to 18th century, People would wear something like this made out of leather, generally speaking, who would record when outbreaks of the bubonic plague and sometimes try to treat it. These individuals were known as plague doctors, and they'd often take and make these masks for a very particular reason, so they could stuff the beak with sweet-smelling items like flower petals, you know, rose petals, stuff like that, straw and other things, because they believed at the time in, I think it was miasma, M miasma, that was the ongoing theory that people got sick from foul air or polluted air, right? Uh, you know, obviously later we learned germ theory, but there was a little bit of merit. I mean, obviously we know now when people are sick and they're coughing, you know, you, there is an element of contracting from it. But it's not from the foul-smelling air. You know, the air doesn't necessarily smell foul when someone sneezes. But they're still spreading contaminants. And uh, with what's going on today with the coronavirus and everything, I've seen some people make some very entertaining masks and go into various shops. You know, from bags on their head to plastic containers, you know, anything to try to keep from it. And it kind of reminded me of this. And I also saw other people starting to make these as crafts. And I thought, why don't I put my spin on it and make something that's actually functioning? Check that out. That's an outport vent and an import one right here. They're sealed up. I took, it, took those from an actual respirator, a functioning respirator, cut them out of it after I made the shell uh, out of fiberglass and wrapped it in carbon fiber. Look at that baby. I also, with the eyes, if you can see, I'll put my hand in there. Isn't that amazing? I move my hand, I put it up. It's a one-way mirror glaze you can pick up at a hardware store. I was actually used, getting this for uh, a riot shield that someone suggested. And I thought that would add something to this mask. Because then when you block the light from the inside, turns into a mirror. Pretty cool, right? So, what I'll do is uh, show you guys how I made this thing, starting with the mold, which was made out of cardboard initially. Which, you know, if you're new to this channel, you know, I've looked into plaster and wood and all sorts of other stuff. Never started a project like this out of cardboard. And that's pretty awesome, because I'm going to use that for other types of rapid prototyping and it worked so well because I printed off uh, pretty much a template that someone else made for a mask and put it on cardboard formed it into the shape and it worked really well so I'll start with that step move on to the fiberglass step carbon fiber building up make laminating the eyes attaching the respirator so on and so forth and of course walking my dog with it <laughs> which was a lot of fun. If you're uh, new to this channel, please consider subscribing. You know, we've been going up in subscription count and, you know, liking and sharing the projects that you enjoy on this channel. And uh, let's get started. All right, so I want to briefly talk about this before I actually start laminating it because I didn't re record me actually making this template. This is out of, you can see paper, and cardboard, right? The uh, the pattern for this, sorry, I'll put in the description. So there'll be a link in the description that'll take you to this exact pattern that I used. I had to modify it a bit by changing out what the bottom would be 
so that way it would actually seal up around the side when it was on right and change a little bit of the sizing on the eyes but for the most part it worked remarkably well I was unsure of how well I could actually mold cardboard and how stiff it would end up because uh, the second you start applying some of this resin I was afraid it was just all gonna melt pretty much and so I wanted to test it out build it up make sure it was stiff and it wouldn't just you know because cardboard is paper and you know paper generally when you hit it with resin will just fall apart so anyways I took the I printed off the template glued it on to some cardboard glued it all together with a hot glue gun and then I sprayed it with some polyurethane resin I'll show you just some krill uh, sorry clear fast drying right just to see how you know first off I knew it would soak it all in real well that's why it's kind of shiny right but hopefully uh, kind of protect it from the resin was what I mean mainly thinking I know that once I start laminating onto this this will be ruined and then hopefully the shell will be still intact with this much definition because that's what the general idea of what we're going to do is you can take some sheets of fiberglass and some simple resin we're gonna just do a uh, sorry cheap resin we're going to do a simple drape mold on this and I've been thinking exactly how I'm going to do that and I think I'm going to just drape it down over the beak and press it in I'm only gonna go like three plies and then I'm gonna actually do the bottom after so it's gonna come down and overlap a little bit and then I'm going to cut and laminate a strip on the bottom once we have a fiberglass shell we're going to try to bring out any of the definition that might have been lost similar to how we did with the mask if you remember with the Dremel and then we will laminate uh, carbon fiber onto it which will give it a really beautiful black and shiny finish right once we have that all done we're going to use polycarbonate for the eyes right get it nice and sealed up in there and then we will try to actually apply something so it'll it'll get really smooth and tight to the skin of course add the attachments for so that way it's actually a mask and then add the valves I think I'm going to add one on the side and the cheek an outlet and then use the bottom here drill holes or even potentially attaching it right on the outside oh that might look goofy but then you could and then replace it you know that's kind of what I'm thinking something like that and then just an outlet on the side so that way when you breathe in it comes in through the beak when you breathe out it goes out through the cheek I kind of like that idea I think that's what I'm gonna go with either way if it's not on the very bottom there it'll still be the inlet will be there maybe I'll do something where widen out the beak so that way this can fit in or we could try something else some other filter on the inside mainly I just want the beak to actually have a function and a purpose of where the uh, you know a way to clean the air as it comes in so all right I just wanted to like I said, the template for this will be in the description in case you wanted to try to build one, even if you want to just make a cardboard one. This actually worked really well, you know, and uh, just for a fun, like, cosplay sort of thing, you could paint this up, put some plastic or glass for the eyes, and that'd be a, just a fun cosplay mask. I want mine to be actually functioning, though. So, all right, let's get started. All right, so let's begin. What I did was I took just some plain basic weave fiberglass. And I stretched it out and started wrapping it and molding it to the shape, mainly because I wanted to see how well it could conform to the cardboard that I was using. I knew pretty early on that I was only going to do a very small shell of fiberglass, starting with just three layers. So I draped it over and started trimming it back 
because I wanted to do just a full wrap all the way around um, to, and see how well I could just do it like that rather than break it into pieces. Much later, I kind of felt that be, it was better to do it in pieces, like do the top of the mask, the beak, and the very bottom separately. And you'll see later that I ended up actually, when I added layers of the fiberglass and the carbon fiber, I ended up doing it that way. So here I am doing just a traditional wet up. I'm getting a gel coat on the car cardboard. I also prepped the uh, cardboard cutout with some polyurethane uh, spray, pretty much like a gloss coat to see if it would prevent it from really sticking to the resin. And I'm also just using some basic fiberglass resin for this. That didn't really work, but it was pretty easy for me to just grind it out as far as the adding the lacquer pretty much to the mold beforehand. It works better for plaster and other things. And yeah, you see here, I'm just applying resin and gradually building up layers to get the shell. And then I stick it after this point into the resin cure box to uh, cure up in just a few hours. And then I will apply more and more layers from this point forward. I also want to mention when you're trying to get it to conform to that shape, the tip of the nose became a problem pretty early on and continued to be a problem for the rest of the build. But uh, having a, a little piece of plastic like a silicone bone, which is what that was, or a nylon bone, really helps get into the shape and the contours that I needed. So I just wanted to mention that. All right, so it's a couple hours later, and this is how well it turned out. Honestly, it did really nice. Uh, there are a few imperfections, but for the most part, you can see that it did conform well. I mean, there's a bit of a delamination underneath this section along that ridge line. But I actually just printed off another one of these top portions of the template that I'm going to glue to soon some uh, uh, cardboard and here in a bit we're going to laminate a, a, sec a second piece and I'll show you why because I have a cool idea of how to make it really aesthetically look really cool so anyways but uh, the, the bottom you can see that's gonna have to be redone somewhat there's a few imperfections that have to be sanded or just grinded off most notably the nose right I was by the end of it able to get it to conform to that ridge so what I'm going to do is cut off pretty much all this access on the bottom grind this and sand it down and then do another piece here to fully seal it so it's all sealed up and of course trim the access the only other imperfection that I see that's like major well maybe not I wouldn't say major but definitely it's going to take more time than just the general sanding before we apply the carbon fiber and other fabrics is going to be right here there was a bubble right on the center of the ridge line there that I'm gonna have to work out but yeah I mean it it did remarkably well for just a simple drape like that I mean it looks cool I can't believe the cardboard actually held up I was half expecting it to just kinda of like the you know collapse in on itself but with no extra supports just some hot glue and some cheap cardboard. So anyways, next step will be grinding it, cleaning up the edges. I'll show you guys that. Sanding it so we can uh, apply extra layers and of course taking the cardboard out because we don't need it anymore. So, alright. Excited guys, this is looking good. It's looking real good. Let's get to it. So here I go cutting up the access fabric off of the mold with a Dremel and a cutting wheel. It's probably the simplest, 
e you know, and quickest way to uh, remove any excess resin and fiberglass. Um, and I pretty much took a sharpie and just did a quick sketch outline of what extra I wanted as I was molding it. And then of course I took off the excess that was hanging off the tip of the nose and cut back the nose. I ended up, I was going to cap the nose, but I ended up changing up the design halfway through it, mainly because I didn't like how it looked with the cap, the carbon fiber cap, which you'll see here in a little bit, because I still show a, a clip of me actually working on it. Now, this type of drape molding worked really well for the initial just kind of shell, but one of the problems was obviously on the very bottom, it was not, uh, it was not fully formed around the bottom of the cardboard, and because of that, there was a lot more air pockets that had to be worked out. And so whenever you're working out air pockets, you know, you go slow and gentle to the touch because you can just blow through, especially when it's only three layers thick like this. And I ended up just removing a whole small section on the bottom because of it. And I switched to a diamond tip to do a lot more of the detailed work in the mask, bringing back the features at the top. So when I ended up laminating up a few extra layers to strengthen it, I went one extra layer on the top. So the total layers was brought up to uh, five layers of fiberglass on the beak and on the bottom, but on the top it was six layers just to make it a little bit thicker. And it ended up working out pretty well doing that. So. Yeah, here you can see I'm actually doing what I was just saying, uh, where I broke it up and did it in sections. So I did the bottom first, and you can see where that blowout was, where it had a big indent. That ended up working out pretty well, though, because that's where I was going to end up putting the respirator. A little off-centered, but it worked pretty, pretty great. And so I did the the bottom first, let that cure all the way, and then I did the beak. And then I did the top. And the main reason why I did that is I wanted the overhang of the top one to extend past the the beak so I could trim it off. So yeah. But yeah, I did the bottom by itself, did the beak and the top one together. And it worked really well like this. Um, and then, of course, sanded it back, cleaned it up. And at any point in time, you could stop. Honestly, you could stop and paint it up. And this would have been just a great for, like, cosplay or whatever. Put in the eyes, add some uh, elastic bands or something so it could sit on the face. But I really wanted this to be a fully functioning respirator. So I wanted to continue to press it and get it as thick and you know, sleek as possible, which is why this video is so long. This is probably the longest project video I've ever put up on my YouTube channel. I know it is. Generally speaking, I try not to have them go over uh, 30 minutes, and this is the first hour-long video pretty much that I'm putting up. And uh, next time, I think I'm going to split it into two to three parts rather than upload just one really long video. So next up, after I did these layers and cleaned it back up, was on to carbon fiber. Now carbon fiber is an amazing fabric to use, but it can be quite annoying because it's very stiff. I was using plain weave and some tighter weaves. I'll put in the, in the description, there'll be a link to all the different material I used that you can look up and buy yourself. If I would have had the opportunity to pick up maybe some satin weave or something along those lines, it would have molded to the beak 
and everything a lot better. It still turned out, you know, remarkable, but looking back, I wish I would have had most of the, the uh, fabric weaves that I have are for the armor that I'm planning on making with it. And because of that, it's really tight, tightly woven and it's uh, more for structural st stuff rather than just purely aesthetics, especially the tape that I use on the, the nose going down the beak because I split the beak into two parts because I didn't have anything wide enough or long enough and I was afraid it would not drape. So this is when I made a decision to actually split the carbon fiber, one on one side of the beak and one on the other. And so, uh, but it goes on just like normal fiberglass. You put a gel coat on it, let it tack up on the mold and then just start forming it around. I'm using my Kevlar shears you know, Kevlar is just, uh, carbon fiber is just as easy as Kevlar to cut, so you just, it's actually easier. It's real stiff, it makes a real sharp, sharp, like sound when you cut it versus uh, fiberglass and other ones. Yeah, so carbon fiber, like I said though, it, it can be a little frustrating working with it on really uh, 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 sharp pointed molds like this, you know and if I was able to order beforehand I would have definitely gone with a lot uh, easier to drape fabric and probably would have tried to keep it all the same weave pattern rather than the beak being done a little bit different and the top piece and honestly looking back at it if if the top and the beak itself was all one uniform thing rather than trying to go with the design where the top was different than the bottom. Uh, you know, the, the pretty much the bridge on the top of the, the ice versus the beak. If I would have had that all just one uniform thing, it would have gone a lot easier too. But in the end, it, it, it adds a unique aesthetic having the beak and the top part different and having that seam along there different, so. But yeah, whenever you're working with these types of fabric, go slow. Also, I want to point out that, uh, so for the rest of the fiberglass, I used that poly cheap Bondo polyester resin. There'll be a link in the description for where you can get that at. But for this, I decided to use a lot stronger resin. I used my favorite Max Bond resin, and it's epoxy resin. And the main reason why is much thicker, and it's very sticky, and it allowed me to really press in and pull on that fabric to get it exactly where I need it to be without it like delamming and slipping off. So I highly recommend that resin. Yet again, link in the description. And it, it's just, it is by far my favorite resin to use. So. All right, so it's the next day. I let it cure overnight. This is what we got so far. I already started cleaning it up. Look at that thing. Isn't that beautiful? I love carbon fiber. It just looks so sleek. Man, when this gets all polished up and all the excess resin gets taken off, it's gonna look nice. I already went ahead and laminated two pieces on the bottom. Sadly, I didn't have one that was just wide enough, so it's gonna have a seam right here. 
which that can get buffed down and filled. There are a few imperfection spots. The tip of the nose, the, the piece that I had going over it was just too stiff. Carbon fiber is exceptionally stiff. That's one of the reasons why you use it for structural stuff. And uh, it just would not mold to the tip. So this whole tip right here, I'm going to make a cap, a carbon fiber cap for it. So there'll be a different section on that. We'll come to that in a few moments in the video. For now, I'm going to trim off all the excess here. And then we're going to, you know, repair a few spots right here where the, the uh, tape on the top versus the bottom kind of separated. And a little bit on the corner underneath there. You can see the original fiberglass. If I can, there you go. So, but all in all, man, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Lightweight. This is going to be such a cool mask, guys. I'm so excited it's turning out so well. All right, so, yep, first thing, trim off the access, and then we will worry about. Uh, kind of starting to uh, fix some of the parts. Um, well, I guess knock it down, see where we're at, what needs to get repaired. Obviously, then we'll have to mold the tip, put that on, glue it, and we'll repair all that stuff. When we do that, then it'll be a quick clean and polish. Then we'll work on getting this cardboard out, which there's still just a little bit left in there and then doing all the respirator fittings. So, let's get to it. So when the carbon fiber was finished, uh, obviously right underneath where those two points met, I noticed that it had bulged up a little bit, mostly because the fiberglass was built up a little bit more on the top. And I kind of wanted that, but I didn't want the gap that I ended up having. And because of that gap, I ended up having to grind it down and just make a patch. That's just what I felt was the easiest solution for that problem, was just grinding there. And uh, I had a spot on the bottom left and right corner that was a bit tr more troublesome that I also patched. And then of course, the way that the nose pulled up, you can see the gap in the carbon fiber from the fiberglass. And because of that gap, I ended up, uh, I was originally going to make a cap for it, and I ended up did, but I didn't like how it looked, because it just was, it, it just protruded a little too far, and was bent kind of funny, and a little too bulky. I didn't like it, so I ended up just using um, some uh, JB Weld uh, epoxy putty, with the steel epoxy putty, and just packed it on the, the nose, built it up, and and you can sand that stuff, which is amazing. And I just worked it down to the exact shape that I wanted it, and then painted that. So here you can see I'm doing the patchwork on the edges, as well as the side. I just did two layers each. And... Uh, coming up will be the bottom corner as well but yeah we'll just go ahead and stop this vid part right here and get on to the next part Alright, so it is the next day. Everything got cured up. You can see the uh, patches. Sadly, the resin was a little cold, so 
it wasn't sticking quite right and it looks a little janky but not too bad little pieces and all right so the cap if you remember I was making it so it would fit on and that's how it looks with the cap but the problem was when I was cleaning out the cardboard kind of had a blowout in the bottom now I could just do a patch on that when I'm attaching it but I was building up a little bit of the body with some JB weld and I was like you know I actually kind of like how that looks so I'm gonna paint it uh, with this black paint this black 2.0 and uh, I think that's gonna be how I'm gonna do it so now what I'm doing is I'm already started as you can see kind of here is sanding so this is going to be a very time consuming process but I'll leave it on so you guys can see how I sand it down because I've got to get all the excess resin even out some spots maybe patch a little bit but for the most part everything looks sealed up pretty good and uh, yeah so get into sanding and then we can finally hit this thing with some lacquer and see it almost completed and from there eyes respirator parts and we are finished so let's get to it so here I'm just sanding down the mask as best I could trying to remove all the excess resin you don't have to worry about ruining the carbon fiber by sanding it really you know you really have to dig in there past all the uh, resin and I wasn't gonna go that deep I started with I think it was 250 grit and worked up from there. I wasn't really planning on just polishing it like going to like you know a thousand, one thousand five hundred and two thousand. I ended up using it later in the video but then I just uh, coated that with lacquer. So this is mostly just a prep step to get it ready for the lacquer and to try to smooth it out obviously and find any imperfections that I might have to paint or otherwise coat extra. Most of it turned out pretty well except for around the edge of the beak because of the, how stiff the fabric was it pulled up on it a bit. So I really had to work those ridges down and you can see that in the final product because there's some little spots that are ripped out of the corner of it but you know that's all I could really do with only having one layer of carbon fiber for that bridge right there. Alright, so after hours of sanding, <laughs> here we are. I already started doing some blending too. It's looking great. So, a little bit of paint on the nose has to dry. Dust hit it. <clears throat> so now, I'm going to hit it with a couple of coats of lacquer. See how it looks, and then we will polish it. Oh uh, yeah. So let me suit up. Because generally speaking, you don't want to breathe in lacquer. Alright. And now you guys can see, once I hit it with lacquer, it should bring that pattern back out a lot. So. Thank you. 
So it's the next day. I right, took it out. Look at that shiny finish. Beautiful, right? There are a few imperfections. When I when I was uh, moving it around, I did scuff it a bit, and there was some runs. But it's really cold in here, and when you're applying um, lacquer, it's easy to get it, especially with this awkward shape, not to you know to pool to pool in certain areas and not just run like it should. So you'll get some accumulation of it but all in all it looks beautiful and I did scuff it a bit when I was grinding out the inside the nice thing about using this cardboard man is you can kind of just get it wet and it'll start to dissolve and just scrape it out and what you can't get with that you can just take the Dremel and brr, real quick I mean that's as clean as I need it for putting in the foam and everything so I also did have this spot right here when I was sanding it it got damaged and that's going to annoy me forever so so the next step is because I am gonna have to touch this up a bit do a little bit more sanding and then polishing and uh, hitting it with lacquer is I cut these two pieces of polycarbonate it's polycarbonate window glaze about a quarter inch thick I cut them a little bit bigger than the eye sockets right and I'm currently <coughs> sorry grinding them down to fit inside of the eye socket. So I'll show that step. Then I want to add a window glaze to it. So that'll be pretty cool. So let's get back to grinding up that stuff. Alright, so I've been in here working on these eyes for about the last three days with the free time I have. Just trying to get them right. Originally what I wanted was some domed, like kind of lenses inside of here. And the polycarbonate that I have to work with is quite thick. And it's very difficult to get that shape with just an oven and a mold. And I kept scuffing them and cutting them. I have so many different failed ones down here. And so finally what I decided was I grinded up a lot right on the inside of where the eyes are. Try to flush it out because the shape of it, you know, obviously it has that, but also because of the nose, it curves down and up here, right? So the eye sockets are actually kind of complicated. So originally I was thinking, like I said, something in there that's wider there and then narrower and sealing it, kind of like, you know, a dome shape. You could also run it along the outside, but then I'd probably want to put a piece of like trim or something so that way it doesn't look kind of, I don't know, goofy to have the lens out. And then finally what I decided on was just placing it pretty much on the inside like so and there'll be a bit of a gap at the bottom but I can fill that so it'll be sealed up um, but one of the cool things that I am doing is adding a mirror finish to the lenses to the polycarbonate right I got this uh, and this is just for my own aesthetics that I'm adding I got this uh, one-way privacy window film right that has a mirror finish on it this stuff's awesome I think it's going to look really really cool let me see if I can yeah when it's finished so you can't see the person who's wearing his eyes but they can see out just fine just with a little bit of a tint to it so 
Anyways, I'll show you this step of me just applying that in case you want to try this. It does stick to polycarbonate pretty well. I was a little worried because it's made for uh, like glass, but it works well for polycarbonate. So that's going to work in our favor. And yeah, like I said, look at that mirror finish on it. That looks pretty cool. So even though I'm a little frustrated that I've been working on the eyes for way too long, we're finally seeing some results. So let's, uh, let's get to, sh I'll show you how to put this film on this polycarbonate. It's pretty easy. Instructions are on the box, but let's back in here to finish curing up. All right. All right, I'll show you. Now, when working with this laminate, for the polycarbonate or glass, uh, it, it was tough to get it just right. I failed this multiple times trying to get it to smooth out on the edge. I found that if you take a Stanley blade or an X-Acto knife and after you cut out the polycarbonate, go around the edges and try to uh, like bevel it almost by removing a little extra of the polycarbonate away, it allowed the um, allowed the laminate, that window glaze, to actually stick to it a lot better. You can see here, after that, I just took it and used some black caulk to seal it in there. Used a lot of access, and then I just pressed it against it, slowly working it around to try to get it perfectly centered where I wanted it. This was a really challenging part, was getting the eyes just right. And I, I had to completely remove one of the eyes at one point and re-laminate it with that window glaze and do it all over because of how easy it is for it to slip out. So just be patient if you're trying to do this yourself and, you know, push it in. Uh, one of the things that does definitely help is there's this stuff that uh, they make that'll like thins out the the caulk, sorry, and makes it easier to smooth it out that you'll see me using to clean off the lenses. That stuff was a tremendous help at getting it level and smoothing it in without it just getting everywhere when I was pressing it against it. So there'll be I'll provide a link on where you can buy that stuff if you're interested. All right, so the eyes are in. Show you show you it now looks pretty awesome there are a little bit of problems I got to clean up but I'm letting it set because I have popped it out more than once and so only this one has some air pockets on it see a little bit of smudging on the side and that one you know they'll be cleaned up when it's fully cured up oh yeah and I also painted the inside just with this uh, black 2.0 Mainly just to clean it up, make it look a little bit nicer on the inside. Now I'm attaching the harness and the seals. So I took, if I could find it, I was just grinding on it. Yeah. Took this old respirator, right? Cut out the exit valve here and the entrance valve. You can put uh, interchangeable filters on. This thing's going to go on the side. That's the exit one. I took that apart and painted it. It's going to go right there. And the entrance one is going to go on the bottom. Right now what I'm doing is I'm drilling for the harness that I'm going to use. I'm drilling and reaming out these holes with my Dremel so this can pop through these little plugs. And I'm going to glue those into place. And uh, yeah, that's where we are right now. I'm going to clean up a little bit now that this is dry. Just to 
get the smidges off. It's less that I have to clean later. And right now the clock is still a little wet. I'll work these air bubbles out as best I can when I'm all done. Yeah. Alright, so anyways, we're gonna drill and ream out these holes and test the respirator stuff, let it set up and give some final thoughts on this thing. It's coming together. I love the mirror finish on the eyes. That uh, adds a whole new dynamic to it. Really, really adds something. So, alright, well, let's get to this. Alright, so now that the eyes are in, need to be cleaned up a little bit. Show you the inside. But it's coming along good. The caulk finally dried. Worked out most of the air bubbles on this side. There were still a few, annoyingly, but I'll just continue to be careful and try to work them out. This side, however, turned out great. I put a hand on the inside to block the light coming through. On this side, you can see how reflective. You can actually see the camera, right? That's awesome. Move my hand and you can actually see through, right? That's the other reason why I coated it black on the inside, you know. I mean, obviously there wouldn't be light coming from the inside of my mask, but it's a neat, neat aesthetic. I'm glad I went with it. Now, I got these points on for the harness. I'm currently cleaning up that because that's a, an old, old harness, and then I'll paint those. But right now I'm working about I'm worried about the seals so the seal that goes around to actually seal it to my face and the import and the export so I took these off of a respirator like I was saying and I attached this one to a piece of PVC right I glued it glued it on and then put a JB weld the steel stick I love this stuff man because you can sand it, you know, and it's really strong. The reason why I did that was a few reasons. Uh, I want to put it right here on the bottom, right? And my problem was if I had it flush with it, I don't see this having clearance because of the curve of the beak, right? So if it was flush, it would probably, I wouldn't be able to actually seal it. So I needed it to protrude below a little bit. And this also guarantees that it won't snap off. If I just had caulked it in, I'm afraid that if I tried to put this on, because these can be kind of a pain, I can, to like get, and actually when you turn it, it tensions up. There we go. So when you turn it, right, it actually pulls down into that rubber seal there. And when you turn it, you know pops off I was afraid that I would uh, snap it pretty much if I just had it like glued and caulked in so with that JB weld it's a lot tighter so I will drill a perfect hole I have this hole saw that's the same diameter as the PVC so we can insert it and hopefully uh, seal it up in there I might even put some JB weld on the inside and caulk it on the outside to make sure and then this is going right here on the cheek. I think that's going to look pretty cool when it's done. You know, I could make up another one so that way there's two of them, but I don't know. I'm just going to do one for now. So let's get started on that. That's the next part. And then we'll add the seals, attach the harness, clean her up, and present her. All right. Alright, so we're in the home stretch here. 
just dri dremeling out the bottom. I started with just punching a small hole and then trying to make that hole larger with some different uh, grind tips with my Dremel. I had a hole saw, but of course the uh, air gun that I had uh, was malfunctioning at the time, so I couldn't use it. So I just kept working on that hole and working it up and eventually switching to the cutting wheel and carefully just trying to dissect sections out and remove it. So that way I could easily uh, easily just slowly grind it up. Carbon fiber can be quite tough once it's laminated up to grind and to cut because you know it's, it's a very it has a very high hardness so you gotta get some good uh, grinding implements in order to really buff through it and but the cutting wheel works great and then as you can see I uh, coming up I cut a piece of PVC to anchor that onto and then use some JB weld to attach that part of the respirator and the reason I did that is I was really afraid that when I turned the respirator it would snap it off with just normal caulk and so I was lining it up making sure it was all centered on the bottom and then I moved on to punching a hole in the side for the exit port. Now if I could go back and do this I would add two exit ports. The reason why is first off I like it being symmetric rather than just one on one side and one on the other and when it was fully sealed up I noticed that breathing out sometimes it wouldn't go. I needed to make that hole a little bit bigger. Like it, w it would when I was ex exhaling it would create a little bit of pressure inside of the mask. Um, it's not the worst thing though. I mean I could still breathe in fine which is just it's more important than breathing out you know but honestly once it uh, got sealed up and I ended up cutting a little bit more from the inside out just to make a little bit more room that seemed to clear it up but like I said, if I could go back, I'd probably put two there or put two uh, import ones on the outside of the sides and one, the outport one on the bottom. And depending on how you guys end up doing it, you know, if, if you do decide to do this project, you know, there's no reason why you have to go to such extreme with that. You could always, you know, use the beak and drill holes and pack that with cotton or whatever. It wouldn't function the same way as a respirator, but it'd be kind of interesting to see if you could make it a, you know, like with activated carbon or something like that, make a kind of a makeshift gas mask out of it. Now for the sealant, I ended up using a, uh, a type of seal that you can get for cars. And that worked phenomenally once I pressed up against it because it's water, it's, once you put it, you know, it, it, it sticks right to the composite. And yeah, that's pretty much for cars, for car doors. And it's easy to find online. And that stuff worked amazing with that. And it sealed it up perfectly, so. All right, so now it is finally dried up. Take a look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Man, this is a cool mask. Sadly, there are still some imperfections I gotta work out around the eye there from the glue uh, streaking down and still some air bubbles. But time to wear it out and try, you know, see how well it fits. I added a little bit more foam on the bottom right here so that way it seals to the face better. And I think I'm gonna take my dog for a walk and try it out. Thank you. 
Well, there you guys have it. One fully functioning Plague Doctor mask. Made out of carbon fiber, fiberglass, and a respirator. That's pretty cool. I love those eyes. I love how well that works. <laughs> That's actually probably going to be my next project. Is going to be a riot shield with a mirror finish on it. So you can look out, but they can't look in and see what you got behind it. Pretty excited about that. That'll be... Uh, in the next couple weeks, depending on how long I have work off. If you're new to this channel and you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you very much. Maybe consider con subscribing and liking and commenting and uh, sharing it. I try to keep up on all my comments and talk back at you guys. I'm also uh, trying to post regularly on the community tab of my YouTube page. If you want to go there, I post updates on the projects I'm currently working on and all that keep you guys informed I also want to mention that I'm going to be doing PDFs of the various projects you'll be able to find that on my reddit page which is also check this out meow um, I don't upload there regularly but I will try to make a point to post the videos when they come out and also the PDFs that'll be how to build those that you can download Read them at your leisure, and I'll have pictures on them as well. So, and of course, as always, please uh, suggest things you would like to see me build. And uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Take care. And also, stay safe. I know right now, with everything that's going on, it's pretty crazy out there, guys. But it'll get better. It always does. You know, this isn't the first plague humanity's face and it won't be the last so keep your head up and stay safe and stay sane later guys <laughs>